So the background to this clause is that King John and the kings that ruled before him after the reign of Henry I were in the habit of sequestering or establishing a royal monopoly over riverbanks, thus making them their preserves. This was in the interest of making profits from the businesses and peoples based on or living on the riverbanks. <clears throat> this imposition of rights, rules and regulations over people living off the river antagonised not only the local populace, but also the local feudal lords and barons who ruled over the local populace according to the law at the time, which itself was undermining royal authority. The clause introduced in the 1215 Great Charter and restated by Henry III in the 1225 Charter sought to repeal these preservations and instill reforms to stabilise the monarchy and impart more social fairness. The only exceptions were preserves already established by King Henry I, preserves that presumably were either used as fortifications for defence of the realm or already had provenance as royal preserves before the habit of exploitation became so divisive. Roll forward 800 years and nowadays there exist charitable bodies such as the River Thames Society that aim to support and promote conservation of both the natural and human history of riverbanks, whose officials are a lord, baroness and knights of the United Kingdom. So the word preserve has come full circle, from preserving use and benefit solely for the king's benefit to preservation and extension of amenities for the public community, but still with royal involvement. <laughs>